Okay. So everybody should have this page in front of them right now, March 24th, 2021. This is the next part of the, so I chose this math and science uh, activity page as part of our math lesson, just because it kind of gets us to have a little bit of science since we don't usually have time for it. Um, since we're on our little shortened, shortened schedule these days. So, does this have something to do with the math, or are you going to tell me something about math? we got to move on. Kind of about math. Is it about this right here? It's about books. Okay, we will talk about it later. Let's move on. We have to get started. So, they gave us a little piece of information right up here at the top. Now, what is this called, guys, when there's a little box with information that is not in the rest of the page? What's it called? We just did a paper on it. What's it called? What's it called? Let's see some hands coming up. Good, I'm hoping I see more hands. Who knows what it's called? You just don't want to say it. Go and put your hand up if you know what it's called. We just did a close reading on it. We just did a close reading on it. What's it called? Andrew. Text features. Yes. Because right here in this box, they're giving us some extra information. Did you just hear a weird sound over there? Double check that. Yeah, but it's like a tiny noise that won't start on the left. I know. I'm hoping it's still doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay. So it says, did you know the adult, the average, excuse me, average adult life of a ladybug is one year? And its life cycle has four stages. First, the book report information to ladybug is one year. That's the average adult life cycle. Average adult life. The life cycle has four stages. First, a female ladybug lays her eggs on the underside of a leaf. When the eggs hatch, larvae emerge and start looking for food. When the larvae reach full size, they enter the pupa stage. Then the pupa changes into an adult ladybug. The ladybug lays eggs and the cycle begins again. So they showed us the little life cycle right here, right? Life cycle of ladybug. Again, this is another. These are both. Going back to our ELA, text, wow, I spelled that way wrong, I forgot a whole letter in there, okay, these are text features, right, they're giving us a bunch of information. Now, typically, a text feature would be something in a in a paragraph, right, where they pull out information, just like in the penguin one that we read. In this case, though, they're giving us some additional information on, on our math page. Does anybody have a question about math? Does it have to do with this worksheet? If it doesn't, we need to move forward. No? Okay. Please put that aside. It's going to be distracting to you. Chloe, proof. I'm sorry, what? Yes. Okay, so let's move down. Maybe not that far down. Each fraction in the number line represents a fractional part of a year. So in this case, the number line, that whole number line, represents what? Look at your pages, guys. I hope you're paying attention. That number line represents what? Right there. What does it represent? Tell us. A year? A year. Zero to one. One year. Each fraction in the number line represents a fractional part of a year. Part of one year. So this is one year. Now, first thing says, complete each number line. Second one says, Olivia wants to find another fraction that represents one half. Another fraction that represents one half of Lady Blake's life. Use the number lines to find two fractions. Two fractions that are equivalent to one half. So what are we doing here, guys? So that second one? What are we doing? Uh, go ahead. What are we doing? Say what? We are doing equivalent fractions. How many are we finding? Look at the second question. How many are we finding? This one right here. How many equivalent fractions do we need to find? Don't 
We're finding equivalent fractions to one another. So what does it say, guys? Remember what I say, guys. Highlight, underline, circle the important information. If you look up on the board, you see that I've highlighted or underlined something. I'm telling you, I'm not doing it just to decorate the page. I think it's fun. I'm doing it because that's important information, right? It says use the number lines to find sellers. One half. Nope. You're not paying attention either. Guys, it does say to find equivalent fractions to one half. You guys are both correct, but that's not what I asked. I asked you how many equivalent fractions do you need to find. Here we are. Two. two. It says right here, use the number lines to find two equivalent fractions to one half. Read the pages in front of you. You saw it, right, Taylor? Found it? Good. Sellers, did you underline that? Thank you guys didn't. Did you still think about here just playing around? Good. Guys, I'm telling you, you get into the habit of doing it. Circle, highlight, underline the important information. Make sure you are drawing your attention to what they want you to do. Otherwise, you're going to call one of us over and you're going to say, what am I supposed to do there? When the information is right there in front of you. So you're going to fill these in. Just like you normally would, you guys are good at that. Then you're going to find two fractions that are equivalent to one half. Then, then, down here it says, Olivia used the number lines below, that would be these two, right, to show that one half and two thirds are equivalent fractions. Do you agree? And then you need to explain. And remember when it says to explain, guys, you know what I want. What do I want there? Tim? I would like you to, yes. I would like you to do both. I want to see, I do want to see you restate, answer, cite, and explain, which is perfect in this scenario. And I also, of course, want, what's the other thing I want? Caps. Caps. Spelling. Information. You got it. You just had it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Capitalization, accuracy, punctuation, and spelling. I don't care what order you remember them in, but you remember them. So you guys both got that. So put on your writing caps. You're ready to race. Because you're going to write at least one sentence here explaining why you agree or don't agree with what Olivia says. Okay? And you're going to tell me why. And the reason that, uh, so the reason I told Tamara she's right about the race thing is also because you need to tell me why. You're not just saying, yes, I agree. Period. Well, why do you agree? I mean, think about if we if we argued everything that way. What if I said to you, hey, guys, jumping off a bridge is a really awesome idea. And then Andrew said to me, yes, I agree. <laughs> really? Why would you agree? I would. I would. I would. And what would you be your reason, Jack, for agreeing that jumping off a bridge is a good idea? Okay. See? Can't give me that answer. Then you got to give me the argument as to why it's a good idea. Yeah. One time. What? I can't remember who exactly told the story. It was like something about jumping off a bridge with a cord. With a, you mean like bungee cable? Yeah. The people who jump off bridges with bungee cable. Okay, yes. So you could give me more of an argument. You could say, yes, I agree that it's a good idea to jump off the bridge if, it's conditional, right? Just like we talked about in the LA. If you have a bungee cable and there's water underneath. Hey, there's your whole argument. Don't just say, yes, I agree. Or you might say, no, I don't agree. Because if you jump off a bridge and you don't have anything to, to save you, you might die or get yourself really hurt, right? You always have to have our, your arguments. This is why we did that opinion writing thing this morning, too, where you guys had to tell me why or why not if you like indoor recess. Tell I'd say no because what if there's drops? See? There you go. Give me a good reason. Give me a reason. That's the citing. You're citing your... You're giving me your, an argument, right? In this case, you're going to cite evidence. So you're going to say, yes or no, I agree, Olivia, I, with Olivia, because she is correct that this equals this, right? right? Or that this doesn't equal this. So, there's. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't go on the bridge because what if there's um, no water? If there's water underneath still. And the um, cable snaps when you're up high. If you hit the water too hard, you just don't get it. So you can get very bad. This is true. This is true. Okay, guys. We need to move on, though. I appreciate it that you have you guys have good arguments. 
This is exactly why we're doing the writing exercises. Because I need you guys to take these arguments you give me and write them down. Okay, so you know exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, any stories that will have to wait. I don't think there is there another girl out? There's not another girl out, right? Uh, Madeline. Oh, Madeline's out. That's right. So when Madeline is back. Taylor, do you have a question? That's for the story. You're going to have to wait. We should make a about jumping off a bridge. About jumping off a bridge. Well, let's see what we have for tomorrow. It's probably not about jumping off a bridge. Okay. So, guys, go ahead and work on this. And also, wait, let me just take a quick look here. You have another one. Almost forgot. Equivalent fraction models. You guys know what these are. They're pretty much exactly what we were doing. Except this time, you are not shading them in yourselves. You're just telling me what the fractions are. Now remember, the denominator is however many parts you have in the whole. The numerator is how many parts are shaded, right? The parts that are represented. So you're going to write both down for each one of these, okay? For each one of them. See? And down here at the bottom, you actually are going to draw two of them. Two different, you're, uh, you'll be drawing four in total. Okay, so we're going to work on this for just a little while, and then we will come back together and we'll go through everything. Preferably before recess, so probably in about 20 minutes we'll go over it, and then you guys will have recess. Okay, any questions about this before we begin? Andrew? I have a question. You did that one, good. You didn't draw the bottom ones though. You have to draw the figures. Tell a question. So does it matter what order we go into that big first that you can as long as you get both done, then you can you can work in whatever order you would like. But it's not too hard. You guys have gotten really good at this, so I think it won't take you very long. Class class. Everybody flip back over to this page. Let's go over to this. Everybody on this page. In five, four, three, two, one. Everybody should be on this page right here. This page right here. It should be right in front of your faces. Let's go over it. So, I want to tell you guys one more time. Some of you are making your lives a little bit more complicated than they need to be. Some of you were going a little step beyond here on this one and started writing additional uh, equivalent fractions. Now that's good practice, but that is not what you needed to do here. That is more work than you needed to do. So guys, what comes after one four on this number line here? Everybody? Four, 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 four. And what's the next one? Four, four, four. Okay. What about what's after one eight? Two eight. Two eight. Three eight. Three eight. Four eight. Hey, hold on. Wait till I call it. What's the next one? Five eight. What's the next one? Five eight. What's the next one? Six eight. Seven eight. eight. Okay, eight, eight, eight. and of course the whole is eight eight. Yes, that's right. Because this one is four. Four. And this one is eight. And a little bit of fun. Now, first, before we figure out our two equivalent fractions. To one half, because that's what we were asked is use the number lines to find two equivalent fractions to one half. Let's see, are there any boys out? I don't think so. All right. So before we do that, let's see what lines up. Let's see what lines up. One fourth lines up with two eighths. Two fourth line up. Lines up with four eighths. Three fourth lines up with six eighths. And of course, our poles line up. Now, the only reason this works is because these lines are the exact same length. They're just cut up differently, right? But they're the same length. The holes are the same length. So, now, let me ask you. If this is right in the middle of this line, and this one's right in the middle of this line, is two-fourths equivalent to one-half? Yes or no? Yes! Yeah. 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 Is four eighths equivalent to one half? Yes. That's it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Two fourths and four eighths. You just used the number lines and you found 
two equivalent fractions to one half, based on the number lines. That was all you had to do there. But then, Rick. The only thing I didn't put was a comma. <laughs> okay, good. The comma is important because we have a series, right? That list. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Go ahead. You need to sharpen as well. As soon as we're done. Schmidt. Same. I didn't put a comma. Okay, but you guys got the right fraction. Yes. Yeah. Good. Tell. Me. You didn't put a comma in. Okay, Andrew, you got these two fours and four eights? Good. All right, let's look at the next one. Now, this is where things got a little bit more complicated, right? Because check this out. What if I went like this? Does that mean that those are equivalent? Does it mean those are equivalent? Let me see a show of hands for yes. Let me see a show of hands for no. The no's are correct. These are not equivalent. <laughs> why are these not equivalent? I want somebody to tell me why they're not equivalent. Sellers. Why are these not equivalent? Because, wait, did I change my sentence? Yeah, you can write me your sentence. I'm reading your sentence. I disagree with Olivia because the only reason one half and two thirds lines up is because she drew the second line too short. That is correct. And of course, you guys can say that in a different way, right? Great. Right. Um, I put, no, I don't agree because the numerator is not half the numerator. That is also correct. These are both correct. That is, those are both correct. And that is absolutely right. The relationship between two, two and three, two is not half of three. Plus, you guys already know, based on what we did up here, that one half is equivalent to two fourths, not two thirds. Go ahead. Right? You can't divide three by two. It doesn't work. No. Not as it, no, he went to go sharpen a pencil. So, now, if we were to make this line longer and make it the same length, and then divide this up differently, we could make it work. If we change these into fourths, right? If those were fourths instead of thirds, and this was three, fourth, and on, then yes, they would be equivalent. But no, one half is not equivalent to two thirds. Just because they lined up didn't mean that they were equivalent because that second line was too short. Their lengths were different. Deva, what did you write? Uh, no, I did not agree. She drew a shorter line than the top line. That is correct. Exactly. I'm hoping everybody's got a sentence here, there that says something fairly similar to that. If you don't have a sentence, make sure that you're writing one now. A complete sentence there. Tell me what do you have. What do you have in your Bible? Do you agree with Olivia or do you disagree? And why? What did you say? I can't hear you. You're tired. I know, but you gotta wake up. Drink some water. You said, no, she's not right, but why is she not right? Tell me why. You gotta tell me why, remember? Well, you have to tell me why. You can't just tell me she's not right. You gotta tell me why she's not right. Bro, what do you have there? Still writing? Okay, finish it up. Write a sentence there, guys. Go ahead. Tell me why she's not right. We've got some good examples. So that line is too short, or... Two is not half of three, right? We know that. Yeah. Perfect. You can write both things down. That is good. You've got two pieces of evidence. You just gave me two pieces of evidence. When you restated, answered, cite, you cited, and you explained. Okay. Good. So. Let's now take a look at equivalent fraction models. Go ahead and flip to the next page, guys. Now let's look at our equivalent fraction models. We have shading in the rectangle to represent the fraction shown, and we're filling in the equivalent fraction. That would be our two bottom ones. The top ones, we are, well, the bottom ones we're drawing, the models to represent the fractions, the two bottom problems. Up here, these are actually already shaded, so we're really just writing in the fraction, right? So, somebody tell me, Sellers, what are these two fractions right here? Um, two things. Can I erase it for this pencil? Yep. And 
Um, one half and two fourths. One half and two fourths. That is correct. Andrew, what are the fractions for the second one right here? Six eighths Six eighths and three fourths. That is correct. Now, what do we have for this one right here, Brewer? Four six and eight. Four six and eight twelfths. That is correct. Um, Schmidt, what do we have right here? Um, two thirds, two thirds. Whoa, whoa. Four, six. Wait, 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 wait. No, wait, 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 wait. We're doing these two right here. Oh, Only these two right here. Two thirds and two sixths and two Wait, 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 wait. Please stop. Go back. What is this one? Oh, sorry. Um, can I just answer the whole fraction? No, you gotta tell me. You can tell me what this fraction is right here. Okay. Just the circle. Um, what, is what is this fraction right here? Um, Whole five, thing. What? Three fifths. Are there only three? Yeah, three shaded. One, two, three, and five. That is correct. Three fifths. What is this one right here, Schmidt? Um, two fifths. Are there only six pieces there? Wait, sorry. What is this circle right here? Oh, sorry. How many parts are there? One, two. Three, four. Um, sorry, I was answering one. Um, nine fifteenths. Nine fifteenths. Yes, nine fifteenths. You got it. You got it. No, hold on. We gotta have other people answer too. Hold on, hold on. I appreciate your excitement. Focus, focus. Ariana, give me this one um, right here. Two six and three ninths. Ian, give me this right here. Uh, that is one, two, three, and two, six. That's right. Now, before I move on to the bottom ones, hold on, guys. Before I move on to the bottom ones, I want to take a quick look again at the top. Okay? You guys are all correct here. Now, let's take a quick look, though. And why these also work? One times what equals two? One times what equals two, Brewer? Two. That's right. Now we have to do the same thing to the bottom number. Two times two equals four. So you know it works. But also because they're one half. Remember what Briggs said earlier? How he figured out the equivalent, the uh, equivalent fraction of one half? Because in this case, four. Divided by 2 equals 2. He took the denominator and divided it by the numerator. Now that works as one half. You can always figure out a half if that works. Right? Now what about over here? What can you divide 6 by to get to 3? What can you divide 6 by to get to 3? Schmidt. Um, 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 what times 3 equals 6? What times? Two. two. Which means you do the same thing on the bottom. We found a common factor. As long as that common factor is there, then you know you can make an equivalent fraction, right? Six divided by two equals three. Eight divided by two equals four. Now, what about with this one? How can we get from four to eight? How can we get from four to eight, Andrew? Mm -hmm. 4 times 2 equals 8. That means that 6 times 2 equals 12. Right? Now, how can we go from 3 to 9? 3 to 9, Andrew. 3 times 3 equals 9. 5 times 3 equals 15. See those common factors, guys? That makes sense? Remember those patterns? Now I know Briggs, you missed some of this. We'll have to have a little review. But we've got the same thing going on down here, right? Now, in this case, we need to take a little look at this, right? 
because this is where things get different. And they're getting different because there's no way we can get from two to three, correct? So what do we have going on here? Multiplication? Yeah. Addition? Well, we do in other situations as well, right? But what do we how how do we know that these are equivalent? How do we know they're equivalent? How can we tell? Okay. We can tell. Yes, ma'am. We can tell because the three is as big as the two shaded in on the top. You can tell based on looking at it, but there's another way. Remember those patterns from yesterday, guys? We actually have a look at this number right here. This fraction here. We haven't actually reduced this as far as we could. Have we? What is the what is the what is another equivalent fraction here that could come before two six? What could come before two thirds? Right. Two thirds before Not two thirds. Oh, I'm not nope. We're not on those yet. Oh. We're on. That's right. That's right. Because in this case, we're looking for a different pattern, right? Remember when our numerators were going up by one? One, two, three, four, and they kept going up, and then our bottom, we were counting by three. Three, six, nine. So our next one would be four twelfths, right? And then our next one after they, that would be five fifteenths, and then six. 18, right? So in that case, we actually didn't have our smallest our, or our most simplified fraction, right? And now you've got the same thing going on over here, don't you? We have the same pattern, don't we? One third equals two six. Look, it's the same thing. So our next equivalent fraction here then would also be three right? and so on. So we don't have the exact same thing going on, do we? Andrew. It is time for recess. So, really quickly, and I'll give you guys a couple of extra minutes. Really quickly, two thirds. We need to draw out the two thirds first, right? Now you could do it like this, or you could have done it as a as a uh, a square, and it probably would have been a little bit easier, right? So what I actually recommend is doing is these are for some reason really hard to draw uh, for a lot of folks. So what I would do here is do it this way. All right, and then shade in two of them. But what if I needed to do another one? And you know, based on what it says, is that we have six. How many do I need to shade in to make that equivalent now? Brew it. Four of them. Now. And we have six, right? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Now, what if, what do I need to do with this one? Down here, Schmidt. What's this one? How do I do it? What's our, what's the denominator, what should be over here? Can't be two. Your denominator always has to be bigger. Denominator has to be bigger. So three out of, three out of what? What should we have shaded there? Four of them? Wait, some people are saying no? Are you sure about that? So if that was four, and I did three of them, how can I make that work? Can I make it work? Can we make them line up? How can I do it? Can we do it? Yeah. Yeah. But how can you make eight and five work? Circle. No, but it needs so we need to make it so that it's equivalent, right? So what if and yes, we could draw circles. We could, we could have done eight slices, right? But our goal is that we also want it to look somewhat like this one, right? 
What if I did one, two, three? Now we have four pieces, just like this. Right? And I shaded in three. Does that line up? Yeah. Three fourths. Just because I drew it the other way the other time doesn't mean that they're not equivalent. Just because the other shape didn't look like it was it, it was still equivalent. Yes. Yes, I know. Guys, I know what time it is. I said I'd give you a couple extra minutes. Are there two Mmm, four. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. It doesn't really necessarily matter how you drew it as long as you got it. So you guys got three fourths there? You got that one? Of course, yeah. you have, uh, we can continue, but. All right, now, go ahead and go ahead and move this where it is. Go to recess. And I will see you guys in just a little bit. And I will go tell Miss Paula that you guys are going to go just for a little bit longer.